Hi everybody and welcome back to this project out at North Ferriby. This is video number two and we're going to go through the Tesla Powerwall battery system that we've installed and how that integrates within the customer's home and the system that we showed you in part one. And then part three will be on the Zappi EV charger. So let's dive straight into how this Powerwall works. So this is the Tesla Powerwall. We get so many inquiries about this and we're now a Tesla Powerwall approved installer. So this is our first one. And this has got 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. So it's a really healthy sized battery system. It's really sleek and takes up hardly any floor space. It takes up a little bit of wall space, but usually in garages and things like that, it's floor space that is tricky. Wall space we've got plenty of. Within this as well, it's got its own battery inverter all in the same unit. So that battery inverter is in charge of charging and discharging the battery depending on what's happening in the home. So if you've got loads of solar power surplus, so say your home is using one kilowatts of energy through your cookers on and a low setting or your lights are on, the socket's been used, say that all totaled one kilowatt. If you've got three kilowatts of solar PV generation, then we've got this two kilowatts of surplus power. Usually without a battery system or anything else, that power would go back to the grid but with a battery system like the Tesla Powerwall, it sees that two kilowatts of surplus energy and grabs it and holds it within its battery cells. Then say on the evening, you then need five kilowatts of power, but your solar is not producing anything. So it can charge up and discharge up to five kilowatts at any one time. So there's, there's a couple of numbers there. The first one is kilowatt hours, 13.5 kilowatt hours, and that's the amount of energy that it can hold five kilowatts is the amount of energy it can push out or grab and put into its battery cells at any one time. So it's important when you're comparing battery technology that you have a look at what those two numbers are and don't get confused. So kilowatt hours is storage capacity. Kilowatts is the amount of energy it can grab and hold within its cells or discharge into the home and put it into your circuits. So I'll take you through a couple of elements that we've got here. So we've got, like I mentioned, the Tesla Powerwall battery. That is then fed via this AC isolator just here. So that allows us local isolation to isolate the battery if we need to work on it, reset the battery, things like that. That then feeds behind me here in this trunking into the Tesla gateway. So let's have a look over at the Tesla gateway. So this is the Tesla gateway. This is kind of the brain of the system. So this tells the power wall that we've just seen when to charge up, when to discharge, but also this is very, very cool in my opinion. It also controls the system when there is a power cut. So one element that we haven't really talked about in a lot of our videos is if there's a power cut. This is probably the best system to have as a grid connected property if you're wanting um, power cut protection. This will discharge up to five kilowatts into your home if there is a power cut. It'll actually, for 10 seconds, discharge up to seven kilowatts. So if you have a power cut and something's on that is a very high using appliance, like a cooker, a hob, something like that, this will discharge up to seven kilowatts for 10 seconds. If after that 10 seconds, you're still wanting to use seven kilowatts, it will disconnect the power and your home will go into a power cut. But if your usage drops after that 10 seconds uh, down to five kilowatts and below, the battery will stay energized and keep the lights on and everything else. But we're gonna do a, quite a cool little test in a minute of uh, isolating the power so you can see how it works. But let's talk about the gateway. So the gateway is kind of like a mini power wall in, in its looks. We've got this really nice glass front on it. And if we open it up, we've got this door here. And there's a couple of things going on inside here. This is where we have supplied our Tesla power wall from. So there's, a, there's an RCBO, a 32 amp RCBO in here that supplies the circuit for the power wall. We've then got the Sunny Boy solar PV, which we saw in the last video, which is the customer's old existing solar. We've then got a circuit for our solar edge PV system, which was in the last video as well. Um, so both of those are supplied in here. Now the cool thing with this is that if there's a power cut, the Tesla gateway will actually keep the solar energized. It can do that because it totally disconnects the connection to the grid so that any solar that's been produced is going into the battery or into the home. 
but can't flow back to the grid. That's a key thing because usually these systems will only keep solar energized if the solar physically is wired through the battery. Tesla, like with the cars and everything, are on a different level. And so they've kept, we're able to keep the solar energized through the Tesla gateway and through the Tesla system, which means that 10 kilowatt hours that you may have in your battery when there's a power cut, that is kind of prolonged because the solar is maybe kicking out two kilowatts, something like that. And that might satisfy a lot of the daytime load and therefore that battery power can last overnight. It'll charge up as well. So if you've got surplus solar in a power cut, it'll charge up. You're lengthening the period that that power wall can supply power to your home if there is a power cut, which is pretty cool. We've then got a 100 amp fuse in here, which is fusing down the main incoming tails into this gateway, which obviously gets completely disconnected if there is a power cut. But that means that it all wires in in a nice neat unit. We haven't got another consumer unit that has battery meters in and everything else like that. It's all built into this Tesla unit, which is, uh, which is perfect and just how it gives a really clean aesthetic. So let's have a chat about how the Tesla actually monitors what's going on in this system. And to be honest, it's the same as any other battery system with one difference. So most of the battery systems have CT clamps. So they'll have a clamp that goes around the main incoming supply to monitor import and export. And then they'll also have a monitoring clamp that is monitoring what the solar is producing. So the Tesla is very similar as it has inside the gateway it has the ability to monitor what the solar is producing through a CT clamp. So behind here, we have got a CT clamp on the supplies going out to the solar edge inverter that we looked at before and the Sunny Boy inverter, which was the customer's existing system. They're supplied in here, so the CT clamp is internal in here and is monitoring what both of these are generating. The difference is that the Tesla doesn't have a CT clamp on this version that we fitted uh, for monitoring what the grid is doing. That's because the grid is actually wired straight through the Tesla gateway. The reason it's wired straight through the Tesla gateway is for the off-grid protection. It needs that physical connection so it can disconnect it in the event of a power cut. So it monitors that through a little energy meter in here, which is physically wired with the main incoming supply tails. So it doesn't have that second CT clamp. That is actually a bit more accurate as well because a physical connection allows it to be accurately metered as if it was your main energy meter. I really like that. One less element to go faulty as well. So I like the fact that it's wired straight through. A little bit more installation work, but like I say, it's beneficial because of the off-grid protection. So that is how the CT clamps work. We've then got a communications cable from the gateway into the battery. So that communication cable is what is telling the battery's inverter to either charge up, discharge, that it's gone into off-grid protection mode. All the signaling goes through that. So we've got the brain here and the inverter inside the Tesla Powerwall battery. So that is all the components. You'll see there's not that many, really. We've got the gateway here, which is the brain, and then we've got the Tesla Powerwall, which is the physical battery and inverter. So yeah, really nice, clean looking battery system. Okay, so enough of me waffling on about what should happen when there's a power cut uh, and all the rest of it. Let's actually test it. Let's see if these lights turn off and the Tesla power comes back on. Hopefully it should all happen very quickly and then the inverter should follow after that. Our solar edge inverter will be quite quick. This one behind me will, will take maybe three to five minutes. So let's try it. I've got this main switch here that will kill all the power coming from the grid into the system so effectively replicating if there was a power cut from the grid so when i turn that off these lights should go off and then come back on but it might be fairly quick let's try it that's clicked it was so quick these haven't actually gone off that's fantastic so now we are running in off grid mode i heard a click inside the gateway so that gateway now has isolated the grid from the system. It's now drawing power out of the uh, battery system and feeding that into the house to make sure that all the lights are on. The internet's probably rebooting, the internet router. It might even have been so quick that the internet router hasn't even turned off. It's literally instant. So now that's in off-grid mode. The customer's app will now be showing him that there's been a power cut, how long the amount of battery storage that's already in the battery will last in the power cut based on his usage, uh, his historic usage. So yeah, we're in off-grid mode now and everything's still on. 
perfect. You can hear our inverter is coming back on, our solar edge inverter is coming back on. So we'll have a little look at that and then we'll have a look at the old system which is probably rebooting right now. So now that that battery has brought us into off-grid mode and we're totally disconnected from the grid, it's actually allowed the solar edge inverter to come back on. You can see here we've got a solid green light and a blue light, but also on this energy meter, we'll see an intermittent flash on this red LED here. There we go. So that means that there's energy going through this and back into the property. So we know that our solar edge system has come back on, even in off-grid mode, which like I mentioned before, will prolong the amount of time this battery storage system can keep the home on, which for me, that is so cool because that solar system could be anywhere in the house. It's energized the full home, which has meant this has gone, yeah, that's fine. I'm coming back on and I'm gonna generate. So if it's during the day and there's a power cut, the inverters will come back on. So let's have a quick look over at the old system and see how that's doing. So we're still in off-grid mode and this solar PV system has got a flashing green light. This is one of the older style inverters uh, and they can take up to sort of anywhere above three minutes really to come back on. But we've not got an error code anymore. That's just disappeared just as we started to film. So we should actually see this system come back on in a minute. If we've timed it just right, it'll come on as we're filming. <laughs> but um, we're looking for this flashing green light to go solid green and then for us to start to see uh, a power generation coming through this system. So that should happen any second now, I'm hoping. A few moments later. A short time later. We have life, there we go. So not quite as quick as our solar edge one, but it has come back on now. We can see on here, we were actually generating 1.7 kilowatts from the old system. But we'd actually have to log on to the solar edge to see what that's generating, but it's probably somewhere similar. Both of those systems are now feeding into this home, even though the battery has, has brought this home into off-grid mode and there's no grid connection. So that's quite critical for our G98 and G99 applications because we're not allowed to feed power back down the grid if there is a, a power cut mainly for safety so that if anyone on the lines is working on it they know that if they disconnect this street that nobody else is sending power back down the lines but with this tesla system we're not in breach of that because the battery or the gateway for the battery has disconnected the system completely from the grid so there's no way that can physically feed any power back so yeah it did come back on so we've now turned the power off on this job so we're still in off grid mode as i speak to you now i'm going to turn this isolator back on which will tell the gateway that the power cut basically is over and that it can go back to operating as a grid connected solar and battery system. So if I turn this back on, nothing happens because what the gateway doesn't want to do is it doesn't want to turn back onto grid mode straight away. It wants to monitor the grid, it's got to go through its setup procedures. So it might take five, 10 minutes before the gateway goes, okay, I'm happy now. I'm going to turn back onto grid connection mode. So yeah, we'll wait for that to do that. So the, the gateway's actually just done that now. So we're back in grid connected mode. Uh, so this is now back as if there's never been a power cut. The customer now has full control as it did before. It doesn't show him how long the off-grid mode's gonna be on for and everything. It's back as it was before we went on off-grid mode. So you can see how comprehensive the system is. It's quick changeover when there is a power cut. And for me, it's the only real system out there at the minute, apart from a purely off-grid system that has that level of, of functionality and that clean, quick changeover. So the Tesla Powerwall is, is the one if you want some serious off-grid protection. So that's all the, the physical elements in this garage, but let's have a look at what the customer gets on the wrap. So we'll show some screenshots now of what the customer has. I'll take you through what it all means. Okay, so this is the Tesla app during a power cut. So you can see it's still on, we've still got an internet connection, and that's because the Tesla backup gateway which is just over this shoulder here is allowing the battery to supply the home with power that's why the lights are still on and that's why the internet connections on and everything else so we can see on this app that we've got uh, 900 watts of solar um, oh it's just jumped 2.5 kilowatts of solar because the second inverter has come on so what i was going to say was that power is coming from the solar and the tesla has brought the, the solar power back on so that it can prolong the amount of energy that the uh, the home can be supplied with during a power cut. Because obviously if it was just battery power and the solar had turned off, then the battery would, would only last so many hours. Where it's got solar backing it up, 
the solar can take the bulk of the energy. So you can see on this example here, we're generating 2.5 kilowatts of solar. The home is using 1.1. And so actually at the minute, the power wall is charging, charging up physically in a power cut, it's charging at 1.4 kilowatts. So the solar is supplying everything the home needs. And now the battery is topping up its capacity. And that's very different to quite a few installs of AC coupled units like the power wall. Usually it wouldn't do anything like that. It would only discharge. That shows that the inverters are back on and we can see there that the power wall is charging up. So if we were to turn the solar off, the green line would, would show the power wall sending power into the house and the solar doing nothing. We can see right at the top of the screen, we've got 92%, so the battery is 92% charged. It's given us a red symbol to show that there's a grid outage and there's about 10 hours of capacity based on the, the average usage for the house in the battery. So that gives the customer an idea as to, okay, if I, I'm sensible with how much energy I use in the house, I've got about 10 hours. Of energy but the difference is that if they can last through till tomorrow when the sun comes back out hopefully then that 10 hours could be longer and longer because the battery capacity is being topped up by that solar power so we've got grid outage here um, power wall is providing backup power currently it then gives us some best practice for grid outage guides. So it gives us loads of information here as to what we can do um, to prolong that battery power. But if we go back, it's showing us this red cross in the grid supply as well to indicate that there is a grid outage. So that's how you would know. Uh, you can also get this to send you notifications and all loads of other fancy things. But that is a great little feature in this app and I love it. So there we've got grid outage about 11 hours now because the battery is charging. So it's a fantastic app and the fact that the power walk can bring your solar on and keep the home energized during a power cut is just perfect. So the Tesla Powerwall, if you needed more power than 13.5 kilowatt hours, we can stack these in front of each other. So obviously every time you add another power wall, you get another 13.5 kilowatt hours. If this customer wants another one, another one of these would stand directly in front and therefore not take up really hardly any space at all. But it would sit here and it would double the battery capacity. Remember that's kilowatt hours. So that's really cool. But thank you very much for watching part two of this video. Tune in for part number three, where we talk about the Zappi and how the Zappi works with this full system as well. To keep up to date with all of our videos, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also press the little bell and that'll send you a notification when we've got another video out. Thanks very much for watching and we'll catch you on the next video.